Today we're doing a quick demo showing our new Timber design script, Timber floor designer. So here I've got some outlines of floors of buildings. It's just a simple line, continuous line. So what it does is if I select that outline and just add it to the script, it's gone through and it's given you a timber floor design. So it's sized all the members, modeled them all up. You can set the type of loading. I'll explain that later. So as you can see, I just select a different floor and I've got a timber design. So you can change the direction, you can change all the different span parameters. Um, this one, these ones have got internal lines, uh, internal walls. So the framing system tries to use those internal walls to its advantage to create the best possible spans. Here I've got a double story. You can do that as well. And another advantage is with our other scripts, you can quickly get a feel for a floor design. So say, say I want this building outline. I want to say, what does this look like as a timber floor? So there I've got a timber floor design, all, all sized up in the grade of timber that I want. But I want a composite floor version, steel and composite. So there I've got an alternative in steel uh, with a concrete deck. So uh, very quick to do that and I can change the direction and spans etc and all that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to do a very quick run through of this new component. It's part of the struct script toolbar here which you can install through package manager in Rhino. The new component is Timber Designer here. That's the icon there. So I'm just going to drag that into the graph. Most of these inputs will have something already default. The only one that won't is curves because it needs to know, uh, have some curves to work with. So here I've pre-drawn some timber members and I'm just going to grab them. So I'm just going to put in curve and say set multiple curves so there I've got those curves set <clears throat> and then I just need to drag it into my component now it won't produce anything only just very basic output to start off with because I need to set a key so I'll do that off camera now okay so I've set that key now it's giving me 105 members, sizes. And what I need to do to display that is use the L and the T. So this is just the tag, the default tag that comes with Rhino uh, and Grasshopper. I like to use the 3D one. You don't have to, you can use the simple one if you want. The L and the T just can just connect to the L and the T. Size is usually default to one, so I'm using meters here, so 100 works well for a 3D tag there. And you can see I've got my design. Oh, and the last thing, justification, I like to set to middle center. It just centers everything. So it's as simple as that. So it's giving you a design for all, that's, all those members. Uh, it's worked out how much load goes into each, it's gone through a strength and deflection check, et cetera, et cetera, and given you a design. So we're looking at a 190 by 45 F17 grade timber. And some of these primary members are double 290 by 45 F17s. So I'll just run through some of the options you've got. You've got grade loading width and these G and Q plus. So there's some help in the struct script toolbar, which is this one, Timber Ref. This is a reference for the Timber Designer. So the first one is loading. 
it'll give you an index for different loading types. So I'll just zoom in here a little bit. You're loading at zero at the moment, which is a timber floor residential. Remember, this is a residential design, so if you want to refine this, um, you can later. But say so I change the loading to two, which is an office. you'll get a 240 by 45 um, instead of a 190. So <clears throat> an office has more loading, more live load allowance. And in fact, now these members here aren't working at all with this grade of timber. So let's try a different grade of timber. So you can see here, you can choose from F17, F17, MGPs, GLs, which are glue lamb, and LVLs. Um, at the moment, this is a selection from typical Australian grades, but we can we will add other grades later. <clears throat> um, so, for example, if I just add a panel here, my grade is F17 at the moment, so if I change that to GL21, so that's a glue lamp, put that into grade, There we've got a 180 by 45 instead of a 240, so smaller members. And we've managed to have come up with a size for this primary member here. Now, for those who know glue lamb, you can get it in 45, but um, it typically comes in 65 or really 63 mil widths. So that's you can just change that in width. Uh, and that's a more common glue lamp size, so 180 by 63. And I've been able to reduce that to a 390 by 63 GL21 there. Now, if I want to model this, I'm just using it, the modeler. So I'll just drag that in. Again, I've set the key, and if I just drag in the member curves and the section size, it's modeled all those sizes up for you. So you can see the deeper members are the primaries and the smaller sizes uh, are the secondaries. Now everything's centered um, around the center line. That's because my Z line is at mid. So I'm going to set that to top, which is one. It's more useful to have everything flush at the top. So there we go. So that's how to model it. And in the intro I showed just grabbing an outline and getting the framing done automatically. And you might have seen this in other videos, but I'll just quickly run it through again. So if I have a look at these outlines, I'm using AutoFramer. So just grab that and put that in. Now I'll add these curves. I'll add this curve. And there you've got a frame framing scheme based on max X and Y spans, which you can change, and your G plus. So I'll explain G plus. What G plus is for auto framer, it will add additional load to each external member on the edge. So it represents a facade load on the edge of the outline. That's optional. But if you add it there, you can use the outputs from AutoFramer in these other components. Usually you do want an additional load on the perimeter because obviously there is a facade. So Now I'm just going to add these floor curves um, to our timber designer. 
Now there's one thing to bear in mind is the floor curves by design are set up into a tree. So there's three branches, the first and the second are the primaries in one direction, primaries in the other direction, and then the secondaries. So if you don't care about that, you just flatten the tree. So I'll just add it to uh, the timber designer, as I said. So if you don't flatten it, it does three separate designs, which you don't want. So if you don't care about that split, which can be useful for other purposes, just simply flatten. Um, and you should have 100 curves in, uh, 100 curves out, and 100 curves out of Timber Designer. So there we have it. So yeah, with a zero uh, perimeter load, additional, this last member here is actually smaller than the second one. That's because it's got half a load. <laughs> so normally it'd be similar or even bigger if you added a um, external wall load. <clears throat> In fact, let's just quickly do that. I've got zero as an external wall load here, the G plus. So I'll set it to one and it's kilonewtons per meter. Now I'm going to flatten that again. As I explained before, you, you do want to flatten this. Flatten all these outputs before you use them if you don't care about splitting them up. And we'll just add it to our timber designer, so G plus to G plus. And you should get, yeah, there we go. We've got a bigger member on the perimeter. So all these members on the edge of the building have that additional load. In this case, it looks like it wasn't enough to tip it into the next size. Remember, there is half the floor load on there, so it balances a little bit. So that's pretty much it for the timber designer. Um, I'll just quickly show you what I did to have an alternative composite design. And let's just use the composite uh, design component, which I've done another video on already. So instead of adding the curves to the timber designer, so if I just turn that off and put it into composite designer, it's given me Once I've added the key, it's given me 100 member designs, which is what I want. Um, and I won't model it here, but you can just add it to model in the same way as we did with the timber designer. Just add member curves and section size. And you can do the same thing with flicking between the two. Did it? get a quick reference design. So hopefully this is a useful couple of tools for engineers and architects as well. Let us know if you have any comments. Um, we, we're constantly improving these scripts, so any feedback's welcome. Um, let us know what you think. Thanks. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.